Hey guys, what's up? So this is the Power Pi, a small integrated Raspberry Pi PC with built-in lithium-ion battery pack that allows the Pi to be powered wirelessly. This is version 2 of the previously built Power Pi project. In the previous version, there was only two sections, the battery section and the Pi holder. We have added a few more sections, which result in somewhat large setup than the one previously. And yes, this bad boy can run Doom. And even PS1 games. We also included an RGB LED setup in this build, which lights up the entire base, giving the system a RGB game code look. A color palette in the web app can be used to control the RGB LEDs. This version includes a powerful DC-DC converter module for powering the Pi and the RGB LED setup, as well as the battery pack on the PCB with three lithium cells, 18650 SMD holder, coupled to a 12V lithium-ion BMS. Also, check out this project page for all the related files and the details about the project. The primary component of the previous version was the power management board, which powered the Raspberry Pi board with four 3.7 volt 18650 cell holders. In order to hold the power management board and the Raspberry Pi together, we modeled a base and added a second Raspberry Pi holding part. Given its five section design, the Power Pi version 2 is larger than its predecessor. These were the sections that we made. This is the top portion of the model and it has two main components, the fan assembly part which draws air into the Power Pi for air circulation and the handle which attaches to the outside of top portion using two M2 bolts from each side. The Pi holder is the section where we place the Raspberry Pi. Between the Pi holder section and the battery holder section, there's a middle section that serves as separating layer. This component essentially attaches the battery holder and Pi holder together. The battery holder section holds the battery board inside. The RGB LED holder or the base serve as the solid foundation for the entire structure. Additionally, the RGB LED holder contain an RGB circuit that eliminates this entire thing. Furthermore, we have included a few name tags and logos with cyberpunk theme. By stopping the print in middle and switching out the filament for a different color, we were able to print name tags and logos utilizing double PLA color. We have to do this since we are using Ender 3. But if you are using a multicolor printer, you can bypass this setup completely. The BMS and the DC buck module were the project's two primary components. Therefore, we begin the electronic design process by creating a schematic for the battery board. A battery management system or BMS is used to control or effectively charge and discharge lithium cells while they are in use. Following the completion of the project schematic, we created the board file utilizing the PCB layout from the CAD design, placing the cell holder on the bottom side and all the SMD components on the top side. After completing the PCB design, we exported the Gerber data and sent it to PCB Way for samples. We place an order for a yellow solder mass board. After placing the order, the PCBs were received within a week and the PCB quality was pretty great. Over the past 10 years, PCB Way has distinguished themselves by providing outstanding PCB manufacturing and assembly services, becoming a trusty partner for countless engineers and designers worldwide. Their commitment to quality and customer satisfaction has been unwavering, leading to significant growth and expansion. You guys can check PCB way out if you want great PCB service at an affordable rate and low price. We start the battery board assembly by adding solder paste to each component pad. Next, we pick and place all the SMD component in their place using a ESD tweezer. We set the PCB on our DIY reflow hot plate to heat it up to the temperature at which solder paste melt. Solder paste melts when the PCB reaches the melting temperature and all the components are connected to their pads. Next, we use a soldering iron to attach SMD lithium ion cell holder from the bottom side. At last, we add the lithium cells in their holder in the right polarity and the circuit assembly is now completed. 
During the schematic making process, we missed adding a break between the 12 volt and in the input of DC DC buck converter circuit, which was critical to cut power going to Raspberry Pi. We use a paper cutter to cut the track between the DC DC buck converters VCC and the 12 volt. And we then added a switch to both of these cutted tracks. Next, we carry out this procedure on the both battery boards. After creating two distant battery pack boards, we need to connect them together to create a single battery pack setup. This is done by sandwiching two boards with 45mm long M3 PCB standoffs. Using four M3 boards, we first install four standoff on a single battery pack board. The second board is then mounted using the extended PCBWare standoff and four more M3 standoffs. The end result will be a battery pack circuit made up of two separate boards connected by PCB standoffs. The battery pack circuit is now positioned with the battery section part and fastened there with four M3 boards. The switch from both circuit are then unsoldered and they are attached to the switch slot on the battery section. We reconnect both switches to the circuit next. In addition, we added a DC barrel jack to the battery section and connected it to the battery board's CON2 charging port using two wires. After assembling the battery section, we place the mid section on top of it and fasten them both together with 4 M2 screws. Raspberry Pi comes with mounting holes intended to fit M2.5 bolts. However, since we are using M3 here, we need to manually widen the holes. This is a crucial step because failing to do so could harm the Raspberry Pi or cause small SMD components to fall loose from their pads. To enlarge the holes, we use an M3 screwdriver bit. We insert the screwdriver into the hole and rotate it, which enlarges the hole. Once more, this process is really important and if you are unfamiliar with this process, it's not advised. Finally, we inserted the four M3 PCB standoff with Pi mounting holes. These will be utilized in the following stage to secure the Pi to the Pi holder part. The Raspberry Pi is now positioned in its place on the Pi holder part and is then secured using four M3 bolts. The Pi holder section assembly is now completed. After assembling the battery section mid section assembly, we place the Pi holder on top of it and fasten them together with four M2 screws. We can power the Pi directly from battery section by connecting the GST connector to the GPIO 5V and ground terminal of the Pi. This eliminates the need to use the USB Type-C port on the Pi. Next, we link the lower end of battery section to the previously built RGB LED board or the base. We begin by connecting the RGB LED board's positive and negative terminal to 5 volt and ground terminal on the battery board. The base is then positioned in its proper location and fastened there with 4 M2 screws. Threaded inserts are required in order to mount the handle in its proper location on the top part. All size of bits for threaded insert are included in the TS1000 tip adapter kit that we obtained from PCBWay's gift shop. A huge shout out to them for providing this kit. Thanks guys. 
we utilize our hako soldering iron and supply t18b alternative bit which we pair with an m3 size bit subsequently the threaded insert is then pick and position over the hole on top section the insert is then pushed downward using the soldering iron causing it to heat up and slide in its place as much as possible keep the temperature set below 180 degrees celsius and above 100 degrees celsius the threaded insert are then added to their places and we repeat the process for the other side of top section now that the handle is in the correct spot we mount it securely using two m3 bolts This time the top portion is placed over the pie holder assembly and then fastened in its place with 4 M2 screws. Using 4 M2 screws we attach the PowerPie version 2 name tags to this device. The XO name tags is then inserted into the battery section and then fastened using M2 screws. Finally we use super glue to attach the Arasaka logo to the pie holder body. Here's the result of this slightly large but simple build. A functional Raspberry Pi computer with built-in battery pack and cyber-like aesthetic. Since the Raspberry Pi 4 powers the setup, it can manage almost everything with throw at it. Here's a fun thing. A web application can use to control the RGB port color. So, all we have to do to control the lighting is to use a Raspberry Pi or any other external device to access web application by utilizing the ESP8266 IP address. The RGB LED board was a large project on its own, necessitating the creation of a separate build guide. So we created a separate project for it. I have uploaded its video, which you can check out from my channel. Now that the setup is functional, let us test it more by installing the OS and executing a few programs. For every Raspberry Pi test, the Raspbian is the go-to OS for testing out the Raspberry Pis. Using the Raspbian 32-bit operating system, we choose the storage device after choosing the Pi 4 model as our model using the Raspberry Pi Imager. In addition to powering the Pi and ins inserting the SD card, we also installed a wireless keyboard and mouse, which are required for running the Raspbian. Following the desktop environment boot, everything was operating well and system did not lag. We are using RetroPie here, which is a popular open source software package that allow to turn a Raspberry Pi or similar single board computer into a retro gaming console. It is designed to emulate a wide range of vintage game consoles and platform, enabling you to play classic games from system like NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, PlayStation, and more. The RetroPie can be manually installed and downloaded by the ISO file from their website, or it can be installed by using Raspberry Pi Imager, which is by far the best method for doing so. Adding games to RetroPie is simple. We first use a blank pen drive, flash drive, or a hard disk drive, and create a folder named RetroPie in it. We insert the pen drive into the Raspberry Pi USB port, and the pen drive will start to blink. indicating that the computer is creating folder in the drive after blinking stop we can unplug the pen drive we attach the pen drive to the computer and access the retro pi rom folder which the raspberry pi just created where we can see all consoles folder finally we paste our rom in the correct console folder as soon as we connect the pen drive back to the raspberry pi it begins to blink once more indicating that the rom are being copied to the pi Depending on the size of ROM this process can take up to 2 minutes to 2 hours that depends once copying is done 
the pen drive will stop blinking and allow us to remove it. The Pi will restart after the ROM has been copied into it and the game list will be then updated. There is a well-documented wiki made by Raspberry Pi about this process, so you can check out from this link. We ran Pokemon Gold in the Game Boy Color emulator, which was a classic role-play game developed by Game Freak and published by Nintendo for Game Boy Color. Released in Japan in 1999 and internationally in 2000, it is the part of second generation of Pokemon series, paired with the Pokemon Silver. This game was pure gold, as it contains two regions, the Johto region and the Kanto region, along with the additional 100 new Pokemons to the existing 151, making the total Pokédex number 251, and we really had to catch them all to complete the Pokédex. At the end of this game, we battled Red, the previous protagonist from the Pokemon Red games, which was super cool and innovative at that time. And yes, it can also run Doom. The battery pack allows the Pi to operate the desktop environment for 6 hours straight and still has enough power left for 2 or 3 more hours when a few games were played on the Retro Pi emulator. The primary goal of this project was to power the Pi with the built-in battery board. Although this setup is entirely wireless in terms of connecting external power source, we still need to connect wires for the display. Now this can be improved if we add a small display to this setup, but that will be a topic for a future project. With addition of a screen, we can turn this configuration into a portable Raspberry Pi system that we can use for a variety of instances in which we need to utilize the Pi without the adapter or the internal power supply allows us to power the unit while we are on a go. All in all, this project is finished and the project page has all the files and documentation that we require to recreate this project. Also, if you're interested in this topic, you can check out the other game emulation related projects I have created over the years. Overall, this project is complete and need no further revisions. I would especially like to thank PCBWay for their support on this project and I also sincerely appreciate the support from all of you who are watching. Well, this is it for today folks and I'll be back with a new project pretty soon. Peace out.